autumn is absolutely stunning. The coziness and beauty of the season really inspire me in my homemaking. I want to invite you into our farmhouse to create beauty, to make fall food, and enjoy all that fall has to offer. decorating this place for fall in stages. Normally I just put some pumpkins and mums on the front porch, maybe add a few pumpkins to the window box, but this year I also wanted to give a little attention to this back patio area. It's really interesting how you keep up with a certain space in your home, how you give it attention, maybe bring a little bit of simple decor to it, clean it, furnish it. The way that you use it really changes. For example, this area behind the house for the first maybe three years that we were here was a spot that we didn't use in any meaningful way. It was just a backyard. Once we outlined it with some stones and then filled it in with gravel, added a few tables and chairs and the fire pit, even those simple things made it to where we use this space now all the time. So I'm constantly trying to keep that in mind with other maybe lesser used areas around our home, give them a little attention. And then the whole traffic pattern, the way that people interact with that space and our family actually completely is different. And I'm sure there's lots of other places that we are missing. This one was so obvious because we had no outdoor seating before and now it's a place that we use all the time. Now this is the first year that I'm actually giving it a little bit of decor. I wanna encourage us to continue to use it even as it gets a bit cooler. So we're going to swap some things around, spruce some things up and make it more usable for fall. Right, wanna take a break from doing all the things I'm doing during these beautiful October days to tell you about today's video sponsor, Dreamland Baby. Now, Theodore is currently taking his nap. He is wearing his Dreamland Baby weighted sleep sack. It is something I'm really excited to go into fall with because not only is it well constructed and quilted, I really like layering. So in the summertime, a lot of times we'll just do a sleep sack. And then as we get into these cooler months, we'll do a sleeper underneath a sleep sack. The weighted sleep sack really helps parents to get more sleep because our little ones don't wanna be separated from us, of course. And Dreamland Babies gently weighted products help the baby to feel like they are being hugged. They are being comforted, which in turn makes me feel great and makes him sleep so much better. Even though I am a mom of a toddler and a newborn and a preschooler, I still in a lot of ways feel like I don't know what's going on with current baby products because I had my first child almost 15 years ago. I was talking about Dreamland Baby with my sisters and my youngest sister just had her baby and she had already heard all about it. She said amongst her peers, the newborn products are the move. Everybody seems to really love those because they have a swaddle blanket that's also weighted that keeps babies asleep longer. We are using the toddler sleep sack and really loving it. Theo loves getting in his sleep sack for naps and before bed. Now with the Dreamland Baby sleep sack, the gentle weight is located on the front or the top of the sack only, so it won't restrict movement. Your baby can safely roll, sit, or stand. For me, it does deter climbing, but all of the movement is safe. Sometimes when I go check him in the middle of the night, he might have fallen asleep with the weight on him to comfort him, but then he's on his belly, usually. The Dreamland Baby weighted sleep sack is great for helping your toddler or baby transition to their own room with comfort. It allows you to get a deeper night's sleep without having to wake up in the middle of the night to comfort your child. It also helps give me more time during the day because he takes a really long afternoon nap in his sleep sack. The sleep sack features a tagless design to avoid irritation, a two-way zipper for easy diaper changes, the cover comb technology, and 100% soft and natural cotton. The cover comb technology evenly distributes weight from the baby's shoulders to the toes, activates deep touch stimulation, helps control startle reflex, provides security and comfort, reduces stress, and increases relaxation. All Dreamland Baby sleep sacks are available in the Lux Weave Bamboo, which is an eco-conscious bamboo that's ultra soft, gentle on baby's skin, and the beautiful fabric is naturally moisture wicking and breathable. It's also hypoallergenic and 
antibacterial. Now Dreamland Baby does have products for all ages. They have the zero to six month swaddle, which features the built-in swaddle. Then they have the transition swaddle for three to nine months. It has weighted arms instead of the built-in swaddle. And then the sleep sack, which I'm showing today, works up to 36 months. Dreamland Baby sleep products are something that I wish I knew about a long time ago. It has so many great reviews. I actually figured that out in person by talking to my sister who is very much in the new mom baby stage. Even though I totally have babies, I feel so far out of the loop on that because I am an older mom and I've been in this for a while, but I think that this old mom could learn about some new products. Now that I tried the sleep sack, I'm thinking about how when I start to transition Victor down for naps, which I will be doing usually around seven or eight months we do that, I will get him in that three to nine month sleep sack that will hold him tight and have that weight that might actually make that transition a lot easier. I cannot wait to try it for that. I will share in the future how that goes. You can click the link in the description box below and use code Boone to get 20% off site-wide over at Dreamland Baby. Again, thank you so much to Dreamland Baby for sponsoring today's video. A lot of times I neglect the outdoor spaces of our home just a little bit too quickly before I really need to. I start to think, okay, it's winter. We need to just let everything go. But this year, that time period really just does last too long where everything dies and it's ugly on the outside and we're just not there yet. So I'm transitioning a few of these spaces with some color. So I brought in some mums, a few pumpkins and gourds that I found. We had a few that we grew and a few that were local. Actually, we had a volunteer plant of gourds that Luke found somewhere on our property. I'm leaving in the vines and all the plants that I planted earlier this season because they're not dead yet. We have neglected the garden. It's overgrown, it's messy, but there are still a lot of beautiful things coming out of it at this time. We did grow several marigold plants and they're really producing. The girls are planning a little gathering with their friends and so I'm making a marigold arrangement for them. I also plan to dry some as well because I think that they'll look really beautiful all winter long. I've never had this many marigolds. In fact, I've never really planted them, but definitely enjoying them and the color that they provide. All through the summer, I've been making arrangements with bright pink cosmos, zinnias, Mexican sunflowers, yellow sunflowers, echinacea, roses, and the colors of these marigolds are so reflective of the fall. Not that we don't still have those other flowers because we haven't had a frost yet, but I'm really enjoying these colors alongside some sage and playing around with table decor. I don't have a big enough tablecloth for this table but after a little fiddling I decide that it looks really nice bunched up in the middle with some beautiful white pumpkins it'll be perfect for their little outdoor party and then also for many outdoor meals for our family as well Okay, what's better than sourdough cinnamon rolls? Sourdough pumpkin rolls. That's just my opinion, but this time of year, everything needs pumpkin. Everything needs pumpkin spice to really get you in the fall mood. At least that's how I feel. So for the sourdough cinnamon rolls, I'm going to be long fermenting them. That just means that I'm going to take advantage of the digestibility of long fermenting grains. So letting the flour sit with sourdough starter for an extended period of time, this just helps make things more digestible. This recipe is over on farmhouseonboon.com. So the night before, I'm doing a half a cup of sourdough starter. You can use discard or active. I have done it both ways. Both ways works just fine for those long fermentation benefits. We're going to be adding other leaveners later, like baking powder and baking soda, so it really doesn't matter which. You can also make these without adding those leaveners with an active starter. I won't get into all of that, but it is possible to allow it to rise longer during the second rise and not use the leaveners. But I'm gonna show you the regular way. So I'm doing that half cup starter, half cup water, four and a quarter cups of all purpose flour, half a cup of coconut oil, half a cup pumpkin puree, a tablespoon of pumpkin spice, a half a cup of honey, and then two eggs. Now, you don't have to put the eggs in the night before if you're uncomfortable with leaving them out during the long ferment. 
I always do this with all of my rolls, with my brioche, and we've never had any issues. You can let this sit out for eight to 12 hours. If you aren't gonna get right to it again, you can put it in the fridge. That's what I did. I actually started these one day and then made them a couple days later. So I let it long ferment for about eight hours at room temperature, then popped it in the fridge for a few days. Now that I'm ready to carry on with making them, I'm adding in a teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. This is also where you would mix in the eggs if you didn't do it the night before. I use my dough hook to incorporate all that. It could be a little tricky by hand. It can be done, but it's a little tough. For the filling, I do a half a cup of softened butter, a quarter cup of pumpkin puree, a cup of organic brown sugar, a tablespoon of cinnamon, and a tablespoon of pumpkin spice. So these are super spicy. I roll my dough that's been fully mixed with all of the leaveners and long fermented out on the counter. I don't really measure, but I like to make it really big so I can create a lot of rolls. You don't necessarily have to do that. It's just a really nice swirl better looking very pretty i spread that pumpkin butter sugar mixture all over and then roll it nice and tight the easiest way to cut it is either with a super sharp knife i need to get my knives sharpened i have a sharpener but i'm just not that good at sharpening them to be honest but i'm gonna go get them sharpened at some point so if you don't have a super sharp knife you can also use some thread I just wiggle that thread underneath wrap it around to the top pull it all the way through the dough and that releases it if you want to make these really even, I suggest 12 rolls. So what I do for that is cut right in the middle so that you have two halves of the roll and then divide each half into sixes. So you can divide that in half once you have it in quarters, each of those in thirds. That helps you to keep them nice and even. Now, if you didn't add any leaveners at this point, you can let it rise until they're nice and fluffy. But if you did, like I did, they can be popped straight into a 375 degree oven and cooked for 20 to 25 minutes. I also like to make a cream cheese topping. It'd be really nice to add pumpkin into this. I hadn't originally thought of that, but I'm thinking now, oh, that'd be pretty and it'd be nice and orange. But if you're just making the regular cream cheese topping, I do six ounces of cream cheese, a half a cup each of heavy cream and maple syrup or honey, and two teaspoons of vanilla. The easiest way to incorporate all of that is to use an immersion blender or a regular blender. I always just use my immersion blender. I overbaked these a little bit. I kind of forgot about them, but they still are just so delicious. Everybody loves them. They were eaten up very quickly. With the sprucing up of the outside patio area, which meant taking away one of the picnic tables, I don't know how we ended up with so much furniture there, adding, oh, the baby is really happy right now, adding some mums and pumpkins and getting the fire going for the first time. I don't know if you get this feeling after each season, but I have certain things I really look forward to, such as in the summer, going down to the river, playing in the creek all day, going out to a swimming hole at my parents' place, pools. There's just a lot of things that, in my mind, you do so many times in the summer. And then whenever it's October and November, I start to think of, you just never feel fully satisfied with any season. Like, oh, we only did that just two times. And I've been dreaming about it for so long. Well, one of the things I really think of with this season is fires. So whether that be in the wood stove, which we'll do because no matter what, we need to keep the house warm but also the outdoor fires. I imagine us lighting it, sitting around outside together in the evenings, maybe Luke and I after bedtime, we've actually already done this once, sitting out there chatting for a little while with the baby, of course, when it's not too cold. But I really hope that we do it more than just a time or two. Inevitably, no matter how many times we do it, I always am clinging to the last season thinking, oh man, I wish I could have squeezed more out of that. But trying to be mindful of it, but then also not beat myself up because time just continues to march on. That's one of the things I love most about being a homemaker. We as homemakers really work with the season. So much of what I do depends on what the garden's doing, what the animals are doing, what foods are seasonally available for me to use in my cooking. 
the ways that we relax will depend on the seasons and the way I bring memories for the kids. You can really work with the seasons to enjoy being a homemaker, enjoy the changes that they bring if you are mindful of them and working with them. One of the things I'm most excited about for this upcoming season for the cooler weather is the meals that really nourish us and comfort us. Warm broths and soups full of vegetables. Not only are they easy to prepare because you can throw together whatever vegetables you have and keep a perpetual soup pot going on the stove, but also they are nourishing and comforting alongside a piece of homemade toast slathered with butter really makes for some simplicity this time of year. For today's meal, I am doing a cheeseburger soup. So I just sauteed a bunch of vegetables, onions, carrots, potatoes, garlic, and some butter. And then I have a stock pot going, I guess you could call it, or a broth pot. I read many years ago on the internet about keeping a perpetual pot. So instead of just boiling it once and straining it off, you can keep it going, add more bones, add more water and continue doing that. Just I keep mine on the lowest setting. There's a simmer setting on my stove with the lid on and just keep adding to it until finally I will strain it all off, refresh it. But I like this method because whenever I have some scraps like tops to celery or ends from carrots and peels, I will throw it in there, continue to flavor it, continue to add more bones, pull more nourishment from them, every last bit of nourishment from those bones. And the way you can strain it into the soup is by just taking a little fine mesh strainer and ladling it by the cupful into the soup and then replacing the water that's in it. Now you'll wanna use a cast iron Dutch oven if you're doing this because if you use something that has a loose lid, it will evaporate off too quickly and you could come over to your stove only to lift the lid and find a pile of dry bones because all of the water is gone. I do occasionally add more water even with the Dutch oven, but it definitely lets out less water than uh, just like a regular stainless pot with a glass lid. After adding the broth, I added in a couple pounds of browned ground beef that has been salted and garlic powdered to be nice and delicious. Add that into the soup, gave it a stir, and topped it with shredded cheese to make a cheeseburger soup. It's a family favorite around here. I had some sourdough sandwich bread. We just sliced that up and toasted it. So good. The other day I was actually watching one of my videos. This does happen on occasion. I like to just see what I was doing last fall. Anyways, I saw my porch tour and realized that I forgot about a wreath that was in the basement. It was a dried flower wreath. It was still pretty, but definitely needed a few fresh dried flowers in it. I do happen to have a bunch of freshly dried sage and roses and echinacea. So I'm just tucking those in there to spruce this dried wreath up and continue using it. Let's make a simple pumpkin pasta. This comes together fast. I have this recipe in my fall meal plan ebook. I haven't talked about this on here in a while. I kind of forgot that a lot of you probably don't have it or don't remember it from last year, but I put together a 30 day autumn slash winter. I just have two of them. So I have like a spring slash summer and an autumn slash winter 30 day meal plan book where I have shopping lists and four weeks of seasonal recipes. So using what's in season, what's cozy, what's comforting this time of year. And I need to get it back out myself so that I can jog my memory. I do this in my kitchen all the time where I get excited about something. I make it a lot and then I forget it exists. And then I need to go back to my blog, to my old YouTube videos, to my meal plan ebook and remember the things that my family loves. This is something that's really nice about having a channel and having a blog. I have a record of all the things that I make that I enjoy and I can look back on. It's like my own homemaking binder. Back in the day, 
everyone made homemaking binders when I was first uh, a new homemaker 16 years ago. And uh, this is my way of logging all of that. For this pumpkin pasta sauce, it's a creamy version. I do one package of cream cheese, a couple of cloves of garlic, a half a cup of heavy cream, a quarter cup of milk, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, some black pepper, and a cup of pumpkin puree. So this can be homemade or from a can, either way works just fine. And then I cook that, blend it up a bit, and then add in a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This tastes really good with some sausage, either ground or as meatballs. Fresh sage, fresh basil tastes really good on it. Top it with some fresh shredded cheese. It's something I like to make at least a couple times a year, especially around this time. Things are feeling cozy and beautiful and I am ready to put some wood on the front porch again. This is something we do every single year to make it very easy to light the wood stove that's just inside that green door. It sits right next to the kitchen, warms the entire first level. Honestly, I've missed it. I love warm weather, but I really miss the glow and the warmth and I'm excited to get that fired back up and share with you cozy homemaking videos the rest of this year. So if you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make a video every week sharing my life as a homemaker and hopefully inspiring you as well.